reading about uh, past economic bubbles, 29 and all the way back to the South Seas and John Law in 1720 and so forth, that I, w- I was, I was kind of looking for something strange to start happening with the economy. And I was also convinced that because in 1987 we had not had the kind of resetting of things to zero that really is necessary uh, to restart the clock, which occurs every 50 to 80 years for an economy, um, I was looking for something big, the next big hit, and to be able to play that uh, either through stock options or precious metals or whatever. So I get this email, I put it on my website, and it, at the time it was sort of interesting. I, I speculated that the tipping point ahead might be something like uh, the U.S. walking out of the ABM treaty and going back into active missile testing and so uh, forth. Now, t- tipping point is a, a fairly heavy expression. I mean, did you at this point in time expect something moderately significant, like walking out of the ABM treaty. I mean, it didn't. This this came across your mind. You understood it. You put it in your your blog, and but that was pretty much it—a a mid-level thing. To, yeah, yeah. I didn't. We, I didn't we look read at these it as things a, often. It's as, as world-ending, Jeff. It, it, it was it was going to be a, a big blip, and I expected you know two or three days of headlines and and something that would echo for right. okay. you know maybe two three months and. And a year from from the event, people look back and go, oh, yeah, remember last year when that happened? Okay. Glad right. we're through that. So this uh, email comes to you, and you didn't you didn't know the person. Right. But you went ahead I and ran with the data. You put it in your blog. Of, uh, All right. I did have two items of uh, credentials, if you will, to offer to George when I first approached him with this. Mm-hmm. The first being that I had a patent in a unique form of software for humans to read from computers, which intrigued him. So he knew I wasn't a total flake, or at mm-hmm. least if I was a flake, I was semi-successful. And then the other aspect of it was I'd used the same technique to sell Microsoft stock uh, very close to the top, very close to the all-time top. And two weeks before the big market crash, I exited all my positions. I see. Okay. Well, right. and, and of course, studying economics, whenever whenever someone says, "Ah, <clears throat> I have a cool way of timing the market," that really got my attention. And then, you have to bear in mind, too, that that had been my goal for some time in developing the software, because I'd also discovered in the nature of looking at language that I was looking basically at the expression of emotion and that stock markets, to my vast horror and surprise, had no rationality behind them and were 100% emotionally driven. So I thought, you, uh-huh, you why don't I called, this? could have called me, Cliff. I would have told you that. Well, I, perhaps I should have, but I was... Busily, busily coding for about uh, three decades, and so had my head basically in an area that had no light. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, this was, uh, what was a half-crazy idea, number 153. So, George, you, you probably were wondering what happened to the other 152, but that's another story, I guess. Well, yeah, and, and Cliff had sent me a copy of his Vortex Reader, and mm-hmm. I'm thinking, oh, okay, so <clears throat> what we have here is a, a very smart software guy, and then I started using the Vortex Reader, and what it what it does is it takes a, a block of text, like off the internet, and and instead of your eye moving back and forth to read text, you know, start on the left, right. move your eye to right. the right, right, it takes one word at a time and flickers it uh, in front of your eye. So, in other words, uh, say the cat is big. Those words are centered in the middle of your screen, and I thought, oh, my gosh, this is really a strange brain to come up with outside-the-box solutions. Like now this, this. Is, this is, let's say, a paragraph, and it takes each word in succession in the paragraph and flickers it one at a time, screen center in front of you. Yeah, and then you can read 1,500, 2,000 words a minute. How uh, quickly, Cliff, do the words flicker? We're running short on time here. but uh, You can briefly. go 2,000 words a minute in the version that we offer on the Internet. I've made private versions that go as high as 5,000 words a minute. Wow. Okay. Uh, amazing stuff already. Back in just a minute as we continue our conversation here. Thanks for being along with us tonight. Don't forget to visit rents.com around the clock for real news from around the world for you, 24 hours a day. All right, gentlemen, let's uh, go ahead with the story. I guess, George, it's in your court right now. 
Well, let's see. I was on my sailboat, got this strange bit of software, discovered that, yes, this guy really sounded like a uh, uh, a, a true software genius. And, and I guess one of the reasons I was able to recognize what was going on was I had been around the high-tech world previously um, back in 1983 or so. I had done... I was news director of a radio station up in Seattle, and we'd done the first ever broadcast of um, computer software over an AM and FM radio station. And then later on, I was with uh, a company that uh, became one of the underpinnings of Avaya. Uh, so, I, so I knew a little bit about computers and and what was real and what was not. I mean, there were lots of people around in 2000, 2001 who fancied themselves to be computer jocks. But the truth is in the code, and when I looked at the, this Vortex reader code and started using it, and, and uh, it, in computers, it's not just the code that gets your attention. It's how the, the whole application worked. And, and once I got that and Screwy 3, 153, I, I took it all very, very seriously. So there we were, uh, September uh, 11th comes along in 2001. <clears throat> we wake up on our sailboat in Oyster Point Marina, San Francisco, down by the airport. We're laying in bed watching the Twin Towers fall over because it was about, oh gosh, I want to say 6.30 San Francisco time. And I said, oh my gosh, look, this is our tipping point. I mean, it was one of those, one of those, it wasn't an aha moment. It was a shivers run down your spine. It like was a, a tipping point. It was a personal tipping That's point. That's right. And, and at, that, at, at that juncture, all kinds of things went through my head. Uh, I was in the process of being cut loose uh, from one of those well into six-figure corporate jobs because, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, un unrelated story. But uh, I said to my wife, this means, of course, that we are now going to have a period of serious inflation. And what had been going on in, on the economic front, if you step back and look at a chart of the Dow Jones Industrials from the Internet bubble high of January through March of 2000, we had begun a major decline from that period. Uh, the, the, the Internet uh, bubble bursting had all the hallmarks of the all-time market peak <clears throat> from a long wave standpoint that I'd been expecting. And so the the occurrence of 9-11, this tipping point, mm -hmm. was almost unbelievably impacting a, in terms of the economy. Because it was beautifully timed. It was, yeah, it was, it, I mean, it was so magnificently <laughs> timed. What a yeah, coincidence. Let me, let me also what point out, George, that uh -huh. on, on the 10th, September 10th, because we had the software at the time that made that prediction that led to the Screwy 50, uh, Screwy 3 153, and the software basically goes out and reads all kinds of crud off the internet and aggregates it into giant databases and sorts and sifts and slices and dices, we knew that on January, or that on September 10th, there were vast numbers of people in the tens of thousands in the economic trade all over the planet that were waiting for the Dow to crash on the following That many? Day. Oh yeah. Now, all Absolutely. right, let's now, well, okay, what we're suggesting here is, in this particular portion of the conversation, that this vast number of people had some kind of a tip-off that something was coming? No, no, no. Okay, I'm then, then we're going... not at all. All right, good. Now, what I'm actually this clear. stating is that economically oriented individuals, stock market uh -huh. analysts, Germans, Russian, French, Belgians, Chinese, any, any nationality you cared to mention, anybody who was at all sophisticated with the stock market right. uh, was waiting for a Dow down move for mm -hmm. some kind of machinations of their own. So they, they had, had, a... had nothing at all to do with any kind of pre-warning or pre-conscious okay. uh, knowledge. All right. But it was, it was like the setup to 1929. In other words, if, if you looked at how the market peaked in 1929, September 3rd or so, <clears throat> and and you and you place that September third uh, someplace in two thousand early two thousand one, you you can actually see how how there was a technical setup that could have led to a super crash on on around well let's say September through October of two thousand one. 
But our and, software, by the way, uh, sorry, George, let me interrupt here for a second sure. and say that we would started sweeping the Internet for economic stuff back in 1997. And I'll just make some quick points here. I turned away from the economics because I discovered I was hunting for stock emotional uh, reactions relative to stock that would allow me to predict and make money doing this because I basically had nothing better to do at the time and I was somewhat depressed. So I wrote this code, developed this process, mm -hmm. and I discovered to my uh, to pique my curiosity that when I went looking for Sun references, Stanford University Network for their stock market kind of thing, I would frequently end up with these archetypes from weird places like garden forums and so on referencing the sun. And people were actually worried about stating things that, that they had a concern about the sun itself. So I noticed that my software was starting to pick up emotional parameters. We picked up those. Now, now I jump forward to January of 2001. We started picking up emotional parameters that were being stated in a conscious fashion in economic forums to the words such as Bush 2 will be Hoover 2 in Depression 2. This was in the January time frame, and it was surfacing in German and Russian and, as I say, all these different languages that we just so happened to sample. Make sense? So we actually mm -hmm. had, had these people discussing this setup that was coming, and everybody sort of saw it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just saying that Universe did a marvelous job of, of timing the attack against the United States such that it basically uh, lifted everybody's attention away from, took all that negative energy that had been focused on the coming depression, and shifted it forward in a number of years gave the powers that be a certain breather. Hmm. Okay. And, and, and in fact, that Bush 2 is Hoover 2 and Depression 2. Hmm. I had written about in um, uh, on the Urban Survival website the week of um, December 15 of 2000. It, it became obvious to me in, in the fall of 2000 that we were going to go over some kind of an economic edge, if you will. And so this when 9-11 when happened... Uh, it was like amazing, amazing coincidence, or maybe it was something else. And, and, and that, of course, is beyond the scope of this evening's conversation, because we could we could speculate all we want. But the the important thing to me was I got this holy smokes! I can see what's going to happen. And so at that point, I told my wife, "I'm going out, and we're going to start buying gold." And so we started buying gold coins mm -hmm. almost immediately after 9-11 because I recognized that whatever was going to happen would, would probably involve some degree of inflation. And uh, as it turns out, buying gold under $300 an ounce in 2001 was not a bad call. Oh, could we roll the clock back? Wow. Yeah, oh, well, we don't need to, some of us. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> if, indeed you, if you own the clock. Yeah. Okay. This